Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the world of AI. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the sheer volume of information you encounter daily? Do you struggle to organize your thoughts and ideas in a way that allows you to easily access them and build upon them? Well, look no further as I'm going to be showcasing a new project, which is called Quiver. Now, Quiver is here to revolutionize the way you store, retrieve and generate unstructured information. Quiver serves as your own second brain and it resides in the cloud, which is ready to assist you in managing the wealth of knowledge and the data that you provide it. Now, drawing inspiration from Obsidian, which is a popular note taking application, Quiver takes the same concepts to new heights by integrating, obviously, the world of AI and the technology of AI into its core. Now, imagine a platform that is effortlessly able to store anything you throw at it whether it's a text, image, or code snippets, or if it's another form of data. What Quiver does is that it embraces the versatility of the information that you provide it, and it offers a seamless experience. Now, you don't need to actually have notes or fragments or any type of things that you would have to upload to a note-taking application, as you can store it within Quiver, which is completely safe to store it with, and you're able to build on top of it with the use of AI. But what's truly sets Quiver apart from its other counterparts is its AI capabilities. And this is something that I'm going to be showcasing in today's video. Now, you're able to see that we're able to actually generate different types of contents using AI, as well as ChatGPT3, as well as ChatGPT4. Now, thanks to the advancements of AI algorithms, Quiver basically analyzes the content of what you actually have stored inside the actual application and it offers intelligent suggestion as well as recommendations. And the one of the great features about this application is its actual feature of its speed and efficiency, which are paramount to Quiver's design. Now we understand that time is a precious like resource for all of us and wasting it could be quite detrimental to our own day to day timetable. Now, what Quiver has done is that you've been able to it, it has been able to ensure that there's light, lightning fast access to your data, which allows you to focus on what matters the most in terms of exploring and connecting concepts to what you, matters the most to you. In today's videos, guys, I'm going to be showing you guys some of the key features as to what you can do with Quiver and why you should actually use it. I'm going to also show you guys the demos as well as how you can actually install it locally on your desktop as this is an amazing tool that will be quite beneficial for you guys. So before we actually get into the gist of the video, make sure you do follow my Twitter page. I'm going to be posting the best latest news in the AI world over here. So definitely give it a follow. I'm also going to be posting the latest AI news in terms of videos on my YouTube channel. So make sure you do subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like my video. And with that thought, if you guys haven't seen any of my videos, definitely do so guys, as there's a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from. So with that thought, guys, let's get right into the video. As we talked about at the start, you're able to enhance your productivity and your knowledge management with Quiver. Now, before we actually get into what we can do with some of the features as well as how we can play around with it, let's actually show you guys as to how you can install it locally on your desktop. You can even incorporate Cloud 100K Context, which is another type of data set you can incorporate within this uh, application. I'll show you also how you can actually add on to that. But first things first, you need to have some of the prerequisites. You need to have Python 3.10 version or higher. You need to have pip installed as well as this command over here and these are some of the things that you can get a better idea of on the repo and i'll leave this link in the description below as to how you can install certain things but first things first you need this application called git now git is an application that will help you clone a repository off of github onto your desktop secondly you will need python as i talked about download the latest version in my opinion i'm going to be using 3.11.3 uh, and also you will need a, a code editor in my case i'm going to be using visual studio code it's completely free and get it for whatever cpu you have so with that thought once you have installed that what you want to do is open up command prompt so type in command prompt and once you are here you go up copy click this green button copy this link over here go back down go back on command prompt paste this but first things first sorry before you actually paste it you need to get rid of this and type in git clone and then type this paste this link in and click enter now it will start cloning the repository onto your cpu once that is done you need to get into the actual folder and that is by doing cd quiver 
And once you are in the folder, you can now start installing the virtual environment. First, you need to do this. Obviously, you need to install pip as well as the other different requirements that it tells you to do. Now, once you're able to get into the folder, I have the right environment installed. You need to start by installing the dependencies. And this is by clicking the actual uh, command prompt over here and paste it into the command prompt. And once that is done, it will start installing the actual files that are required for this uh, package. So once this is done, I'll be right back. So once that has finished installing all the dependencies onto your CPU, what you now need to do is open up Visual Studio Code, which is your code editor. Now click on the file and uh, sorry, you can just go over here, click open folder and open quiver up that you've installed and it will take a couple seconds and once that is done you will have it ready right here now what you want to do is go into streamlit folder and what you want to do is go into the secrets uh, dot oml dot example folder what you want to do here is rename this take out the example and the doc and once that is done you need to start importing your different api keys so in this case you're going to be using a different type of application as well as an api key for serp serpa base and suppa base sorry i don't know how you pronounce it but basically this is where you're going to be deploying as well as storing your type of, the different type of vector storage now your api key is going to be used to generate different it's going to utilize openai's lm to help you generate different ai content now first things first you need to create your own api key obviously you need to make sure that you have certain tokens already paid for so make sure you have your credit card link so that you can actually spend and utilize the actual application. So first things first, make your API key or get your API key and load it up with certain tokens. And what you want to also do is open up account with Subbase and it's completely free and you can get provided with the project uh, URL as well as the API key over here. And don't worry, but guys, I'm going to be showcasing all of this. I'm going to be removing the API keys after. So, you know, you need to tell me that I need to change my API key or have it private as I'm going to be changing it at the end of the video. But first things first, what you want to do is create your own API key. I'm going to create it, copy it, go back to Visual Studio Code and paste it back over here. Oh, sorry. I got an S here. Now, once that is done, you need to, you can also put your different API key for different cases. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be, this is optional, so you don't need to put it. But I'm going to be putting the SUPA base service key as well as the URL. And you can get this from, what you can do is go on the dashboard, create a new project. I already created one because I wanted to save the time. And once you're over here, you can create, copy the project URL, go back on Visual Studio Code and paste it over here. You can then go back to the service key, which is the API key over here, copy it and paste it back over here. Now, once you have completed that, you can just click save and you can close this. And now what you need to do is go back on the repo and copy this command over here. Where is it? Sorry, right here, streamlet run main. And what this will now do is you're going to start running the actual application. So once this is done, you can then open it up. Once it's finished initializing, it will start opening it up on your local host. Now it'll take a couple seconds. Once it's ready to load, you're going to be able to start running the actual application of Quiver, which will take a couple seconds. Now let us now get into the next uh, part of the actual video where we're going to be focusing on some of the features, but that's easy as that guys as to how you can install it onto your local desktop. Now let's actually highlight some of the key features as to what you can do with this application as well as some of the cool things that you can do with Quiver. As we talked about at the start guys, Quiver has a range of powerful features. Now one of the main key features is its store anything feature. Now with Quiver, it's designed to handle a wide variety of different types of data which we talked about at the start. Whether you want to store a text document, image, code snippets, or any other type of form of data, Quiver provides the flexibility to perform and accommodate your needs by making it able to store those types of documents on their actual application. Another feature is this generative AI feature, which basically Quiver leverages advanced AI algorithms to enhance your productivity. Now, this is done by utilizing generative AI capabilities to assist you in both generating and retrieving information. And this is how ChatGPT is utilized in Quiver as it helps 
suggest as well as retrieve information that is best fit on the web to actually assist you with this within the actual application. Another feature is this fast and efficient feature which Quiver prioritizes a speedy as well as a more efficient way of accessing your data. Now this is done with its optimized design and Quiver ensures that you're able to quickly retrieve the information that you need. Another important feature is its secure feature and this basically means that Quiver places a strong emphasis on data security and the privacy that you have within the data that you store on this application. The, the actual platform employs a robust encryption technology which basically means that it safeguards your data from like unauthorized like pro uh, applications as well as third-party users of this application so making sure that your data stays stored perfectly fine and there's no issue in terms of privacy leaks and lastly it's open source which means that the platform is able to use for anyone and you're able to use it freely this basically means that you're able to collaborate and innovate within the Quiver community. And this is quite amazing as you can definitely do a lot of different things by enhancing the capabilities of Quiver. Now, let's actually get a chance to play around with it. Now, with this thought, let's get into the next focus of this video. So first things first, let's actually take a look at some of the key things that you can do. You can configure certain chunk sizes as well as tokenizations of what you want to generate. You can ask anything that you want with the actual bot. You can add knowledge, which you can add different files. If you have a certain app like PDF, for this case, I'm going to be adding one, but you can add multiple different files as well as adding different URLs. In this case, I can just add the repo over here and I can go back to cover and paste it and add the URL to the database. What it'll do is it'll start running and it'll add the actual content. Now in this case, I don't think I'm going to be able to add this over here, but you can get different types of things that could be added but in this case i want to add this to the database which is a pdf now i think i'm having an api error so once i have that figured out i'll be right back in this case i wasn't able to actually figure out what was happening but you can actually drag and drop your different files that you want to talk with or store your different knowledge and data over here you can add it with the database once you have uploaded and you can also add different urls to the database now, once you have done that, you can start chatting as well as asking different questions and it'll help you promptly effectively get the best response using what data, data that you have stored as well as utilizing models such as GPT 3.5. You can also select 3.4, depends on what you want to use. And you can also play around with the temperature and token size that you want to use for each prompt that you give it. You can also forget different things. I don't know. I'm not able to get into this feature because of my API. You can also explore different things, but that's basically the gist of what this application, your, how to actually use this application. There's also different things that you can do. Record a screencast, you can clear the cache, also go into settings and play around with different things. Now, you can also run on save, which automatically updates the actual application. And that's basically it for what this application is. One great way of utilizing quiver and getting the full potential of it is basically having it used as a chat bot q a like functioning bot within which you can actually add your own pdfs as well as multiple different like large texts or urls which entail a lot of different like uh, textual like documents and what you can do with it is upload onto the vector and you can start chatting with it as well as getting a better idea of retrieving and generating better like AI content that correlates with the knowledge that you have. That's one functional way of actually utilizing it on a day-to-day -day basis as it would ease the actual process of finding the content in large PDFs as well as getting you the best engaging as well as the most like precise uh, like summary of what you want that is outputted with this application. So in a way, this is a great tool that will definitely help you out. And in summary, I definitely see this as a groundbreaking platform that combines the power of cloud-based like second brain with uh, generative AI capabilities. And I definitely see this as a tool that could be used for a lot of different cases in terms of personal knowledge management. So definitely hope you found this video quite informative and you got some sort of idea as to what you can do with Quiver and with that thought, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely give the Twitter account a follow as I'm going to be posting a lot of content. And if you guys haven't seen my previous videos, definitely do so. Make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and like this video, guys, as it will definitely help the channel out a lot. And with that thought, guys, 
I'll definitely see you guys next time. So have an amazing small, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys next time. Have an amazing day, fellas.